Okay, so in part one, okay, the elephants go north uh, for 1.1 hours. So, okay, if we multiply, how many seconds in an hour? 3,600, 60 times 60, right? There's 60 seconds in a minute times 60 minutes in an hour, okay? So you're gonna take your 1.1 and you're gonna multiply it by 3,600. I believe it comes out to 3,960 seconds if I'm not mistaken, okay? All right, so that's our time in seconds. I'm choosing seconds as my uh, units for time because it makes the most sense that I'm given the speeds in meters per second. Right? So on that same note, I probably want my distances all in meters as well. Right? The other thing I know is that it is 3 meters per second north. Okay? That's all I know for part one. In part two, say you question? Yeah. Okay? In part two, okay, I know that they walk 7 kilometers south. So I'm going to right away convert that to meters, not kilometers, meters. I just said I was converting it to meters. 7,000 meters, okay? And that is south. Um, and then I know that they, that takes one and a half hours. Well, that's 5,400 seconds, okay? And then in part three, okay, they walk at 4.5 meters per second north. for another two hours, that's 7,200 seconds. Okay, they want the overall distance, so the total distance, and they want the average velocity of the elephants. So they're getting their steps in these elephants, okay? You gotta figure out how far they go, and then their average velocity. So hopefully those numbers now all into the correct units will help you. I'll give you a couple more minutes and then we'll look at the next step. So if I want the total distance, I obviously need to know how far the elephants go in each section of this trip or in total, okay? I don't know the distance in part one, which means I do have to do a little bit of V equals D over T here, okay? Uh, and it's actually gonna be displacement that I calculate. Uh, I'm just going to manipulate for that. So T times V, okay, will get me D. So that'll be 3,960 times 3.0, which should give me 11,880 seconds. Don't be impressed. I did not do that in my head. Just remember it from period one. Okay, so if anybody was going, holy crap, could I do that in his head? He totally didn't. Sorry, that's distance in Z there. I just remember the number. I don't even remember what I calculated. Okay, so D, 11,880 meters. All right, I have everything I need in part two. I don't need to do anything in part two. I have displacement and time in part two. Okay, so I'm good there. Sorry, this one is also north because it's a displacement. And I have to do the same calculation here. D equals V times T. So that'll be 4.5 times 7,200, 32,400. Yeah, okay. 32,400 meters north, okay, for that one. Okay, I know how far the elephants walked and in what direction in each section of this total trip. So if I want to get the total distance, what do I do with those numbers? Just add them, and I don't care which direction they're going. This just wants to know how far do the elephants walk. Okay, so we're just going to add up the displacements, but we're going to ignore their directions. Okay, so we will have 11,880 plus 7,000 plus 32,400. All right, they got their steps in. They walked 51.28 kilometers on this trip. Okay, that's a lot. So that would be our total distance. Okay, uh, 51,280, right? Meters. Okay, because distance is just how far did they go. Doesn't care which direction or where they end up at the end. Now, the next part does care where you end up at the end because now we're looking for the average velocity. And average velocity is the total displacement 
divided by the total time. What these elephants did is they walked this way and then they turned around and walked back and then they went forward again. So they ended up up here at their final position from here, their initial position. Okay, everyone all right with that? I mean, I kind of drew a messy vector diagram there, but that's what they did. They walked north, then they walked south, and then they walked a lot north. Okay, so um, what I have to do then is figure out how far are they north of their position, initial position now, right? And so to do that, I do basically the same calculation here, except I'm going to subtract the 7,000 because the 7,000 is south. Right? That's all that changes in that operation. Now I've got my displacement, or rather the elephant's displacement. They are now 37,280 meters north of where they started. Okay? And if I divide that by their total time, which I haven't calculated yet, so I'll have to put it in brackets, okay, uh, that will be 3,960 seconds plus uh, 5,400 seconds plus 7,200 seconds. All right. So the average velocity of the elephants is 2.25 meters per second north. Okay. Now, I didn't do a very good job of showing my work there. Okay. Um, you should definitely show your work on those steps. Okay. All right. Everybody okay with how that question went? Was it really any different than the other ones? It just had three parts instead of two. Okay. That doesn't really change what you do. And again, not something I would ask on a unit exam because you use B equals D over T one, two, three different times in this question. All right. I only need to assess that once to know if you know how to do it. Okay, so this is as tricky as they get. Okay, this one doesn't have any unit tricks. You can leave the units the way they are. But this one tells you the totals, as I kind of foreshadowed before. Okay, this one gives you the totals, and then is going to ask you to calculate something about one of the parts of the trip. So you're going to have to do a little work in backwards here. Okay, so in this one here, we know a car makes a 60 kilometer trip, whole trip 60 kilometers, okay, with an average velocity of 40 kilometers per hour in a direction due north. Okay. The trip consists of three parts. The car moves with a constant velocity of 25 kilometers per hour due north for the first 15 kilometers and 62 kilometers per hour due north for the next 32 kilometers. With what velocity does the car travel for the last 13 kilometer segment of the trip? All right. Now, other bonus for you. Everything is north. So do I have to worry about anything being negative in this question? That makes it a little easier as well. Okay. I'm going to give you a few minutes to get that one written down, get the givens written out, then I'll put them out and we'll kind of work at it step by step as we go here. Okay, so let's look at um, maybe just the first part of this here. So there's obviously still three parts to this trip. Okay, in part one, or actually, let's do the totals first because they give us that. Okay, they tell me that this is a 60 kilometer north trip. Okay, so that's a pretty important piece of information. And they tell me that the average velocity over the whole trip is 40 kilometers per hour. Okay, so nice, everything is in kilometers and hours. I don't have to, my units already match, so that problem is solved for me as well. Okay, in the first part of the trip, the velocity is 25 kilometers per hour, and it's 15 kilometers north. Okay, so 
that's pretty good. All right, part two, I've got a velocity of 62 kilometers per hour, again, north, okay, for the next 32 kilometers. Okay, also north. Okay, and then part three, I only know that part three is 13 kilometers and that it's north, okay, because the whole trip is north. They want me to find the velocity for part three. What am I missing in order to get that? Yeah, I need the time for part three. Now, it just so happens, I don't have the time for anything in this question. I have the same information for all the parts except part three. I have D and V. Can I get T? Yeah, for all the parts, actually. Okay, so I'm going to start with the totals. Right? Time equals D over V. That's going to be 60 over 40. So this whole trip takes one and a half hours. Okay, I can find the time for part one. T equals D over V. Okay, 15 kilometers divided by 25 kilometers per hour should give me 0 0.6 hours. All right, I'm going to do the same thing in part two. T is going to equal uh, 32 divided by 62, which is like 0 0.51 something something, right? Sorry? Okay. Hours. Okay. So the total time is one and a half hours. And I know what two out of the three things that add up to 1.5 are. Can I get the one thing I'm missing? Yeah. Okay. Now, is this a bit of a runaround? It absolutely is. Okay. So the total time equals the time for part one plus the time for part two plus the time for part three. And I know these three things. So I'm just going to subtract T1 and T2 over to the other side, and it's going to look like this. One and a half hours minus 0 0.6 minus 0.51 equals the time for part three. Comes out to like 0.39 hours or something like that, right? Okay, okay. now I got the time for part three, 0.39 hours. Okay, V equals D over T, and I get about 34 or 33 point something kilometers per hour. I think it's 33.6 or something like that, right? Yeah? 34 point. Because I, I, I rounded off this 0.51, I just remembered in my head. Okay? It comes out to about 34, we'll say, kilometers per hour. Okay? Again, you did the same calculation four times in that question. Okay, I'm not going to ask you one like that on a test because you did the same thing four times. All right. Now, here's how it's going to go the rest of the, well, going forward at least. Tomorrow we're going to start talking about acceleration. Okay, so if you're struggling with the B equals D over T stuff, please come see me. There's a whole bunch of practice problems in the workbook that we didn't even look at, okay, that you can do to practice. Um, so we'll do acceleration tomorrow and probably for the remainder of the week we'll work on that. And next week we're going to get into graphics. Right, so there'll be a fair amount of algebra and calculating this week. Okay, good job today, guys.